Hello everybody, Andy here again, Monday I do believe, I hope your weekend was a good one, I suspect it was quite a quiet one as per usual, but as, bef as usual I uh, put the daily figures down below and yesterday a bit of a drop but 596 new deaths in hospital, but that usually happens over the weekend because of the way the figures are sort of collated. Um, the daily, the, sorry the total deaths now is over 16,000, 16,060 and obviously as I mentioned yesterday we're expecting it to go well over that 20,000 figure the figure that the government thought would be a good result <laughs> so we're probably i mean then if you take into account the, the prospective figures from those care homes and people in the community generally i think we're probably already at least up to that twenty thousand. but there's still potentially a long way to go yet the daily album yesterday was kate bush from 1986 again her a classic sort of solo album uh well, i suppose she only did solo albums really didn't she hounds of love as i said from 1986 i ended up listening to a couple of albums yesterday i listened to the second album by the band as well while i was doing a jigsaw puzzle trying to do a jigsaw puzzle i decided to have a go at doing the um the beatles one i showed you the other day the sergeant pepper brilliant it's doing it up there on the old uh, table up there on a nice big board that i've got to do puzzles on brilliant until I got part way through it and suddenly realised that the actual puzzle being square as opposed to rectangular wasn't going to fit on the board. <laughs> so I, I reluctantly had to give that up and take it apart a little bit and I'm now going to try it on the Santorini one which Ken sent me the other day. But you know, first world problems and all that sort of stuff. And talking about all that sort of thing, actually a lot of what I've spoken about in the last three weeks or so, day 27 or something I think we're into now, it has been about what we're doing to sort of uh, fill our days, what we're doing, you know, with all this lockdown and, you know, you put so many people being furloughed and all that type of thing, we've all got time to do stuff, to do jigsaw puzzles, to do videos, to go out walking and do all those hobbies and stuff, but so many people aren't in that situation. We know, and we, I talked about, and we go on about quite a lot, quite rightly about all the people that are working in the front line if you want to put it that way in hospitals and care homes and in the community generally carers etc but even people who are delivering things for us people who are working in supermarkets who are face to face with other people in their daily jobs and quite rightly they are being recognized for that in lots of different ways whether it be fundraising whether it be clapping for carers on a Thursday or whatever it is that you're doing wherever you are but there are so many other people who are out of the public site, should we say, who are still working. And because of the way that things have gone, because some certain people unfortunately have been laid off, so a lot of people have been furloughed from particular companies and things like that, there are still people within a lot of those companies, within whether they be multinationals, local corporations or just small local businesses, who are still working. Julie, my partner, sitting over there tapping away at the moment, is is one of those. And they, a lot of them, are actually working a lot harder than they've ever done. Because then they're under more pressure than they've ever been. And they're doing jobs that they've never done before. Because the nature of work now, it, the world has changed, as we know. We're all dealing with so many different problems. Companies, firms, as I said, all those businesses I just mentioned, are all dealing with this. This is something new to them. And they're all having to adapt to it. And they're having to adapt to it in different ways, with less staff because they furloughed, because they've laid people off, or because the sickness of people, have, you know, they're obviously they're ill um, and are having to self-isolate and they'll be off because they're ill and recuperating and all that type of stuff. And I was reading a couple of articles yesterday actually in the newspaper, but even some of the big companies, even some of like EasyJet as an example, they're not, they're not flying any planes or very, very few just to repatriate people. Their planes are effectively mothballed for the moment and they've laid off or furloughed, should I say, a quite a number of staff. But they are as busy as ever with their sort of call centres, with people ringing up about or, or answering emails or whatever about the flights that they might have that are coming come in the future, flights that have been cancelled, etc., etc. Those people on the end of a phone are under more pressure and they're doing harder work than they've ever done before. And I think we sometimes forget that. And I know, for example, Julie's having to do that. She's now do, having to deal with a different aspects of the business that she works in and dealing with other sides that she doesn't usually deal with. And that puts pressure and that puts stress on everybody. And I think we need to sort of remember that sometimes. It's something that's easily forgotten that if you do pick up the phone to talk about your flight to this or that or your holiday here or there or your insurance policy or whatever it might be. Um, one of the other people that they were talking about in that article was British Telecom who deal with... Um, you know the internet generally and telecoms generally over here in the UK I mean they're under even more pressure than ever um, 
their, their services are required far more than they've ever been, you know, to put things like this up. People are binging on Netflix, using the news sites, etc. But so many more people are working from home as well. So it puts pressure on their system. They are working harder than ever. Their engineers are out there trying to repair everything now. Instead of just one office block, they've got 50 different places that might be using the, a connection, if you see what I mean, individually. Um, and they are having like 20% of their staff off sick for one reason or another, uh, and they can't work from home as, you know, as such. So that, that so many of these companies are being put under pressure, and I tend, think we do tend to forget that a little bit sometimes. You know, I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody talking about, oh, yeah, it's great, we've got, we've got time to do this type of thing. Fine enough, we've just been out for a walk and bumped into someone who said exactly that. This is great, I'm really enjoying this, because I can actually relax and, and do other things and I maybe couldn't have done before. That's very good if you can do that, if you've got the facility to do that. But spare a thought for all of those people, whether they be carers, workers in the health service, all of those that we've been recognising before, and as I said, quite rightly so. But don't forget all those others that are working hard, the unseen ones that you can't see, and they were on the end of the phone or the end of that email. Spare a thought for them as well, because as I said, they're probably working harder than they've ever been under very trying and difficult circumstances. Anyway, stay strong, stay safe, stay at home, <laughs> and hopefully I shall speak to you tomorrow. Goodbye.